Today I'll reveal how I painted a beautiful lotus on silk. I've been curious about this for a while and I'm excited to share the process with you. Here are the dye colors I will be using. If I need any other color, I will show you. If you want a grid drawing, you can do a print screen. And in general, it's enough to paint it with a gradient, either with the color to the center of the lotus or to the tips of the petal. But my painting will consist of two steps. In the first step, I will paint it with one single color. And in the second step, I will detail the lotus flower, add color. As you can see, I didn't trace the whole drawing with the resist. I'll explain why later. To start, I simply wet the areas I'm going to leave the lightest with water. Not all of the tips of the petals I'm going to leave white. <laughs> you know, I like variety. Now I'm going to introduce magenta and I'm trying not to paint each petal separately, but to find large shapes within the lotus. With the water, I'm adjusting how dark or light the magenta will be. I forgot to say that I'm painting on a lightly tinted crepe or crepe de chaine. You may remember it already. And about the resist and the color of the resist. I'd like its color to match the lightest parts of the lotus petals, so I didn't tint it. On the other hand, light resist in dark areas always annoys me. It seems to me that it ruins the shape. So knowing ahead of time where I will have dark areas, I didn't circle it with the resist. I hope that later it will be seen and clear. Just in case I remind you that this is the first step of painting, in which I use only one color, magenta, in gradation from the lightest magenta, almost colorless, to the richest and most saturated. At this stage my task is to find the places of light and shadow. Some petals will be darker than the rest, with no highlights. Where the dye doesn't spread well, I soften the borders with a wet brush. The brush is quite elastic, synthetic, round, with a thin tip, from the nearest bookstore. Specifically, this one is number 10, but I will, but I will have a bigger one later. The most important thing now is to find the right tone of crimson color. That's to feel how much water to add to get the optimal lightness of the color. Oops, what a relief that the dye didn't fall and spill. Otherwise, I would have had to start all over again. The first step is complete and already the lotus looks pretty convincing. Like I said, the second step is to work out the details, add another color and deepen the shadows. In one of the videos I said that I don't like to add black to darken the color, because I think that black not only makes the color darker, but the color loses its purity and brightness. I simply add a darker but bright color. Just now I mixed magenta with ultramarine, and I'm making the shadow deeper.
Still, I'll take a warmer version of the magenta. I've re-darkened this petal and I can easily remove the excess <clears throat> with a paper towel. I softened the borders of the color a bit. In some places the color is too diluted with water that it may seem almost colorless and it's time to mark the very center of the flower. I'm slowly starting to work out the fine details. And tell me please whether you are interested in such a detailed demonstration there, or you are more comfortable in a more clip accelerated mode to watch. Remember, I mentioned that not everywhere I circle the drawing with resist. Already now these white lines are bothering me when they are in shade even though I haven't built up all the depths of the shadows yet. It seems to me that they make the shadows look flat, and now I'm glad I didn't complete them. This kind of detailing can be done by controlling the wetness of the brush. I talked about it in a past video, and as you can see, my brush is pretty much dry right now. I'm going to introduce more colors into the lotus. I've zoomed in on the image, but the truth is you won't be able to see the palette and how I'm mixing the color. And let me know, please, is it essential for you to see the palette throughout the video? The blue toned out too intense. At this stage, the lotus looks like this. And I'll show you the background painting in the faster mode. And I have one more question for you. Apparently, there's a video of questions today. Nevertheless, tell me please, would you be interested in seeing a more detailed process of background painting? Uh, because in my opinion, a beautifully painted background is just as critical as the object that's on it. But I don't want the video to be too long. Anyway, your feedback is always important to me. Thanks to everyone who leaves comments, gives likes. I hope you enjoyed the lotus. And I'll see you next time.